the park in there uh, dripping on the straight away. So there's not major facilities, that's just grains and such like that. Loading and unloading, it's one hope people come along uh, in the ferry and, uh, and uh, come out again. And um, the, uh, the board the employer of the, uh, the Dover uh, community here uh, is uh, uh, really the, the main industry uh, down in this area. Uh, what you, um, is that better or I'll just turn that volume up? Is that better? Yeah, oh, oh, that. Is that better or is that even too loud? Oh, that's yeah. So um, the um, the port is the the main employer of the um, the Dover area, and uh, tourism uh, coming a very close second. As I mentioned before, Dover Castle, uh, which we saw just before on the uh, the right hand side, Dover Castle. Um, it was um, originally um, built in 1179. The original castle, uh, when William the Conqueror came and uh, conquered England, he uh, uh, built the castle, uh, built numerous castles in fact, all over the country and wanted to make that uh, a very strong defensive uh, outpost. And uh, it was primarily then uh, used uh, over the centuries then to, uh, uh, to protect against France and the invasions because, uh, as I said before, it's a very close, uh, the, the closest way to get from, uh, uh, from France to England. Louis XIII tried to uh, invade in the 13th century, but uh, he was unsuccessful. Uh, but this um, castle and uh, Dover itself, the town, makes one of uh, five towns which are known as the Saint Ports. And uh, these are uh, uh, essentially they're a, a, a trade federation which was opened up for, uh, for the purposes of defence and of trade. They have beacons, for example, which they would light up so they could warn the other cities that uh, they would uh, uh, about to be invaded, and uh, the uh, generally work together then to uh, uh, to promote uh, uh, their defensive interests. So the St. Ports, um, Hastings, New Romney, Hyde, Dover, and Sandwich, and then later a, uh, a six one was added in fact, but to the name St. Ports remains, St. being the, uh, the French for, uh, for five. And um, this remains this day, actually, this institution. Institution. Uh, it's one which is um, uh, nowadays really just a ceremonial thing, um, but uh, the, the institution of the St. Paul's does remain and it's part of the, uh, uh, the proud tradition that uh, uh, the, uh, the locals have uh, for, um, for in the area. And um, Dover Castle, uh, it's um, part of this defence and uh, it was used in much more recent times as well um, for defence. Also in the, uh, the Second World War, uh, the base for uh, Operation Dynamo. And uh, Operation Dynamo, that was the, uh, uh, the operation during the Second World War to evacuate large numbers of soldiers from, uh, from France, from the north of France, uh, mostly the Dunkirk area. They had to be evacuated for strategic regions, reasons and uh, that then consequently meant that a lot of um, civilians were, were, were involved in the rescue mission. Lots of um, fishermen, uh, lots of commercial boaters and such like. They uh, sailed over one night, uh, took as many soldiers as they can and uh, aided them in the, uh, the retreat from France. And uh, that um, a very significant moment, the Operation Dynamo, that was... Um, took place and masterminded from uh, Dover Castle. Dover Castle uh, also um, the, the site of much, uh, uh, much filming work has been taking place there, such as uh, Doctor Who, uh, the, uh, uh, the science fiction program that was uh, filmed there, some of that, and uh, likewise all the uh, uh, the program which uh, took place in the Tudor era, uh, lots of uh, filming took place there. And the Second World War was uh, very important for Ken for another reason as well, because this is where the Battle of Britain was fought. Uh, the Battle of Britain, uh, the battle over the skies of Britain. Uh, this was uh, the uh, a huge um, air fight, really. Essentially, the, uh, uh, the Germans had started to uh, uh, invade with airplanes in a significant degree, and uh, this was um, with the instigation of the Royal Air Force at the time, and it was a time where uh, uh, the idea of um, air superiority and air power became uh, such a uh, such a uh, an important factor in uh, fighting wars. And uh, the RAF, consequently the Royal Air Force, they had to prove themselves as uh, an entity. Many were still sceptical uh, before that. You just had the army and the navy, and uh, the air force then proved itself in its mind. Not just the, uh, the Royal Air Force in Britain, of course, there was uh, uh, the Canadian Royal Air Force, they uh, helped uh, uh, to a very significant degree and they uh, provided men and planes as well uh, for the defence effort. And uh, many of the famous Polish airmen and 
Slovakia and other countries such as the Czech Republic, uh, or Czechoslovakia as it was at the time, uh, they came and fought and defended the country then uh, during the Battle of Britain. Many of those, it said, they uh, had to drink a, a bottle of vodka uh, before they went up and flew to get the bravery to go up and do it. Uh, but uh, that day it did by all means. And some of the Polish fighters in fact, are some of the, uh, uh, the most successful uh, in terms of their hit rates. And uh, the Battle of Britain was very instrumental in stopping um, Germany come further in um, because it gave the Germans the impression that there was a lot of air defense and uh, that were they to go further up uh, into the country, then uh, they would uh, encounter more air defense and uh, eventually they gave up on the idea of uh, attacking. It was something of a bluff, in fact, because it was pretty much all based in the, the southern part of the country, but uh, they did uh, uh, manage to, uh, uh, to do that, and uh, uh, consequently then uh, they became up with the idea of uh, attacking by air. But that was um, thought very much in and around this area. There's the, uh, the Battle of Britain Memorial uh, in Gable Le Fern, which we just drove past on the, uh, uh, the left-hand side, uh, and that's uh, in the... Uh, uh, the area sort of just uh, towards Folkestone here. Folkestone, another major town, and another major town nowadays because of the uh, the Channel Tunnel, because uh, uh, the Channel Tunnel was built to uh, to go under the tunnel from Folkestone, not Calais, uh, which would have been the closest point, but slightly different. Uh, that goes through uh, from Folkestone down to Calais, and that is the most recent way of crossing the, uh, the Channel. There was, um, as we saw before, there were the ferries back in Dover. There used to be other options, such as catamarans and uh, hovercraft, which would go, and they were quicker options for people who wanted to go over uh, very quickly. Uh, but eventually, the idea, uh, the old idea, in fact, an idea that existed since the 19th century, uh, was implemented, and uh, the Channel Tunnel was built. The construction completed in 1992, and that meant that people could go across to uh, France much quicker. Then. Uh, it takes about 35 minutes then to go across to uh, France in the tunnel. So that then, uh, it, it used by uh, many uh, many of the truck drivers and uh, also many of the car drivers too. You simply drive on and uh, go into the tunnel and uh, you can then um, uh, drive out from the other end much more quickly. Leaving from uh, Folkestone, which we can see on the, uh, uh, the left hand side of the is also supplemented then with a much more recent uh, uh, rail link which goes from Folkestone then up to uh, London 